Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Star Ladder Season 11 Europe. We have made our way to our fifth and final game of the day. And that matchup is going to be between Team Secret and MYI, or Meet Your Insanity. Secret coming into this one, the heavy favorites, about 80% odds, according to Dota 2 Lounge. And, well, we'll be bringing you the English coverage. Myself, Kyle Guy for Beyond the Summit, and joining me remotely is going to be Blaze. Blaze, my friend, how you doing? You looking forward to this matchup? Most definitely. We got to see some real dominance from Team Secret in that last one. Maybe my insanity will give them a bit of more run for their money. Kind of a mystery team here. I mean, they've been in the Serbian Dota scene for quite some time. But as far as exactly what they're going to bring to the table here, it still could be a, a huge level of variance. I mean, obviously, the, the Vistage like is what they're going to open up with. But where they go from here, it could be anybody's guess. As long as they stick with early game tempo, I think they're going to have a strong lineup. And, I mean, we've seen Lizard open up with a Meepo pick against Na'Vi early in Star Ladder, like they've got a, a lot of variants on their team. And we'll see how they make the use of it. As uh, I mean, maybe MY kind of saw what Kuroki got done last game, and they're already feeling the like and groove. A lot of people say, and professionals have said alone, that a lot of Dota and how the quote meta works is could be a lot of trending as well. Mm -hmm. Just what they see works out good. They feed off that. They make it work in their own right. That they see someone like a Lycan dominate one game. They remember the fact that they have a strong Lycan player and that they can build something around it to make it work here. And Imbus maybe spirit. MY are feeling a bit of that right now and having a bit Dire of that team Kuroki uh, Kool-Aid. We'll see here. Team <laughs> Secret from last game, they see an Ember picked up from Exist, and they're like, maybe we'll play Ember. And they get it up here, second pick. I'm always questionable as far as seeing the Ember get grabbed up so early. Mm -hmm. um, S4, do we know him Ten as being an Ember player remaining. a whole lot? I, I, I can't remember if I've seen him play it too much recently. Yeah, Five I've seen Kuro remaining. run more Ember than I have S4, but I still think it's possible either way. Mm -hmm. um, if they do want to take it to the mid lane, it'll be back. pretty strong here. It'll get some good momentum. And uh, it comes back to what we were talking about last game, the Battle Fury being really strong to hold the high ground against this aggressive push. The Familiars, the Wolves emanating that uh, cleave effect. You could just slide a fist Ten and take remaining. down the entire wave in most cases here. So it's going to be difficult for a mind standing Five to really keep those birds remaining. alive, and that's just going to be feeding more gold to the Ember Spirit. And I'm curious to see. I mean, Secret, we saw them Reserve embrace time. the Lycan uh, and being able to work it out. They got a lot done as their four-man hit squad, and Kuro got to really farm out the jungle to his own leisure. It was a bit of an intriguing mm. lane setup at the start in the previous game where they had the Dying Gyrocopter Skyrath together in the off lane for uh, Goomba's side, and Kuro was a bit uneasy with it, couldn't really get as much farm as he'd like in the lane, but it was enough for him to transition into the jungle and pretty much be uncontested. We didn't see a lot of aggressive movement. The rest of his team really Ten did a good job adding remaining. pressure elsewhere, and we'll see if it's something that MY are going to be doing themselves. Five and for Secret, I'm curious remaining. to see now that they've done it so well what they're going to do to go against it. If they're going to look to roam time. early, they still have a couple of supports they need to get. And, uh, well, with the Elder Titan Wisp being banned out, Earthshaker still in there. And uh, we'll see if it's something they can consider for no-tail. Radiant team. Yeah, I think they need to emphasize a little bit of mobility across the map here. The one issue that, obviously, Team Secret put against their opponents last game is the fact that they were in two places at once all the time. And they were pretty much at full force fighting 4v5 while Kuro got to do his thing. They need to have remaining. a mobile lineup that can respond to tower pressure on one end of the map Five while still being strong remaining. enough to fight on the other end. So I'm not saying that they should go like the puppy nature's profit support as we have seen once or twice, but they should pick up something that at Radiant least has uh, some global sense, some ability to move across the map pretty quickly. Maybe we could see that Ancient Apparition yet. I'm not too sure. But at least as it stands, they have some pretty good AoE with the Tide and the Ember, and maybe they just Dial need a, a mobile pick. single target focus hero. The Rubik will be picked up, however, from my insanity, so maybe some Ravage deals could go the other way. And if they do indeed steal Ravage, I could see them absolutely wiping out Team Secret. And there's the AA. Radiant so you call it there, pick. more global presence. I certainly do like it. They could even follow through if it's not going to be an S4 Ember. I don't know if he's been playing a lot of Zeus, but global presence there. I know we already have the Tidehunter selected, but uh, I was going to casually throw out the Nature's Prophet. But the more global, the better, I like to say a lot of the time. But there's your AA uh, puppy. had been playing it a lot. It's not his luxury Radiant Marana, but still. Did a fantastic work last game, being able to catch a lot of big ice blasts and still found Ten his way to put together remaining. some reasonable farm. Nothing like an Agnum Scepter, but still more than enough. It was kind of just the, seconds, the gunshot to the race remaining. for his team on being able to go for engagements. But here we go, MY, after picking up that Reserve Rubik, time. and they're going to follow through and grab a hold of the Faceless Dying Void. So a Faceless pick. Void could be grabbed into the AA. Lycan, 
the interaction with a chrono not the best, but if they're kind of counting on a big four-man hit squad with this faceless void while Lycan farms on his own, I mean, that always works out. So the question becomes then for this last grab, what they can do to really make a big impact as the four-man group and what they can add on top of that chrono. Yeah, I think the No-Tail Earthshaker is a pretty no-brainer pick here. If they're not going for remaining. some awesome thing like the Meepo, I hate to hype it up, but it still is a, a pretty viable pickup here as far as being remaining. able to jump over the map and have the chilling touch. But if it's not the Meepo, then I would say Earthshaker is a, a pretty easy pickup for No-Tail here, and that's going to enable them to turtle it up, to set up their combos, the spells, and just to continually have that presence where Mind Sandy will never want a five-man. Disruptor's another hero that he's played occasionally, but Disruptor doesn't really counter a whole lot here. Uh, I think Elder Titan just kind of still suits better because if Lycan does go down the road of getting a Necro book and everything, that's just more of a swarm for him to be able to kind of jump onto. So I'm with you as far as Earthshaker goes, and they'll probably grab it here if they always love to save their secondary core for the, the fifth grab. As um, We continue this one out. I just want to make a side note. This is our last Europe match for today for Star Ladder Season 11. We do have more Dota later, though. Uh, I believe at about 4.30 Pacific slash 7.30 Eastern. There's a disruptor. Bam, baby. Uh, 7.30, it's uh, going to be American Dota. We have only one matchup of American Dota today. I believe it's going to be Pain Gaming. They're going to be taking on Not Today. So really good uh, Southern American matchup that people can enjoy the spiciness of later. But to finish this one out, the big name Team Secret. Now they do remaining. grab that disruptor. I mean, I don't know. I always feel Five like he was more of a niche remaining. pick, but... I can also see a huge stack storm being able as a prominent setup. I mean, the Faceless Void can kind of help set time. things up for you. A quick glimpse back would kind of ruin his whole ultimate altogether. There's always going to be a spot for Disruptor, I say. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a lot of potential there. Obviously, it has to be skillfully to be able to get everything off. But, I mean, you can even cage the light here in this situation. During the time where he's shifting, I think Disruptor has a great opportunity to build up that kinetic field, and it will... Uh, take form before the Lycan's able to jump out unless he has, uh, I don't know, I, I guess he would have to be forced out by an ally in order for that to actually work out. So I think Disruptor's a great counter to the Lycan, and uh, if they catch him off guard, they can either just silence him so that he can't shapeshift, or they can catch him in the kinetic when he's trying to transform. In either case, a, a really good counter, and a hero that can bring a lot to the mid to late game. Like, either one of these supports with an Aghanim Scepter can do a lot, and that's kind of the same thought that we saw last game where the visage got a relatively early ag and scepter and mm -hmm. uh puppy did go for the force uh, but had that a, a ag threat as well 10 seconds i'm remain. curious to see if if uh, no tail does play disruptor both of these heroes can be pretty passive Five in the early game remain. they really mm -hmm. need their levels before they can really make a high impact with the exception of like an early roam chilling touch which we could still Reserve see again time. from secret like we saw in the previous game um but as far as being able to move around the map early and c really contest Lycan's farm, I, I don't know how good and valuable it could be from an AA and a Disruptor. They're not notoriously known for being heavy gankers early, so uh, MY can feel like they have a little more clear in the early game on trying to build up their laning situation. So with that knowledge, I, I'm, I become more curious on how they're going to follow up with this fifth pick here. It's going to be what I'd imagine being their mid laner, uh, the tempo controller, someone to potentially maybe even snowball out of control. And they also Ten have to consider the anticipation remaining. on what the fifth pick for Seeker could be. They're thinking it's going to be the Kuro hero as they banned out the Morphling remaining. already, but mm -hmm. we've also Grace. seen Kuro play Ember Spear because they can always switch it there. But look at this. It's going to be wow. quick. So that's a, that's that's a lot of greed. A lot oh. of greed here. Oh. And that's a brood. That's a brood. The first real brood I've seen, at least from my own, in the most recent patch in Captain's Mode, Team Secret. They're feeling spicy in this one, and we get to see the mother come out. All right. I'm excited. Well, well, well. What do we have here? Really nice to see Team Secret unveiling. Of course, it's a, a pretty nice matchup for them to actually auto strat like that and really practice it competitively because they feel already really confident against my insanity. Mm -hmm. There's a skill gap between these players, and they know it. So they want to draft to do something unpredictable and really throw my insanity off their game. Now, Faceless Void will still be able to detect the Broodmother in Chronosphere, but otherwise they really don't have a great lineup against it. The Fade Bolt is their only AoE ability, other than, I guess, Ten the Familiar's stuns. Remaining. Like, they do not have good ways to deal with these Spider Links, and they're going to oh, be man. all Five over these low armor heroes. Visage and Rubik, extremely low armor and low base movement speed. Simba is going to have a field day with this hero. I'm so curious to see, and it wasn't that long ago I saw him playing it on his stream, 
you know, in pub style play. And I remember I was sitting there and I even remember I chatted. I'm like, oh, brood, huh? And I couldn't help but feel like maybe they're going to start incorporating in a few of their lineups and allow Simba to play it in the offlane position. And I guess I didn't have to wait very long, did I, Blaze? They're going to have to pull it out. And like you said, if more teams want to consider taking advantage of the Phoenix and the brood now being brought in or back in to captain's mode, um, you got to be able to throw it into your loop at some point and try it out, and why not against a team like MYI? This is going to be our first glimpse into finding out how effective this hero can actually be in a lineup like this, and I'm excited for it, man, and we'll get ahead and underway, and without further ado, I'll just quickly roll through introductions on your side for MYI. I don't know why I always take the lead on introducing the <laughs> teams I don't really know <laughs> and try to butcher the hell out of their names, but uh, I'll try it again here, Blaze. On the top lane, we got Bucktop going to be playing your support Visage. Just behind, actually, well, that's up, up, up in the head already as they go from early aggressive movement here. Oh, I have to keep it out. Lizard oh, on this Rubik no could scout here. out. Telekinesis throwback here, but that is not going to be enough. No one really close enough and being able to take advantage of that Telekinesis. Now it's going to be Secret going back the other way. And both teams now are going to kind of play a little bit of footsie here. But neither one really committing. A very oh, short range glimpse nice. brings him right into a very nice chain. There's the chilling touch. First and blood. for the second Strong game straight, we are going to see Secret acquire a very early first blood in the top lane on the MYI. And well, I guess before I finish that thought, I'll finish out the introductions. <laughs> With that said, it's going to be Grazine Sensei playing your clinks. Lycan is going to be played in the mid lane from Cole. And uh, Rubik, who already pointed out, Lizard. And I guess that leaves your faceless Void, Milan. Or Milan begins. playing your off lane Void. Yep, but we see already this Team Secret getting a nice little chain of advantages there. They were playing the Dance of Death, and they do get the glimpse off on the target they needed to. Skilling the Searing Chains pretty early, but gets them the kill they want. Same with the Gush, I guess. But now looking at Team Secret supports, it is going to be puppy on your Ancient Apparition. Your Boots first Disruptor, played by Big Daddy No-Tail. He got the first blood, too, so he's really going to be rocking some early items. It's going to be Kuroki on the Ember Spirit. He's going to be the safe lane farmer, while S4 takes up the mid Tidehunter matchup against Lycan. Oh, you got to wow. hate being that Lycan right there. The Crackage Shell, the Anchor Smash, both great tools against him. Uh, of course, he did skilled gush for level one. Uh, bottom line, it's going to be pretty interesting here. Clinks is going up against Simba's Broodmother, and he's going to have a soul ring out very early on here. He's got stout shield. He's going to maybe go a little bit into the in-cap bite since he doesn't really need hardcore HP regen, and it'll be a pretty good time for him. Not so much for Booktop up top, though. No, Booktop gets caught out right there. You see they're trying to contest this pull camp, but they don't really have the ammunition to do it. Seems like MYI's potential aggro trialing not working out as good as they hoped, as even the side pull camp is now going to be contested from Secret, so they're off to a very strong start on this one, and well, Mother comes, Blaze, and makes her debut yeah. in what I'd imagine being in Star Ladder, and Simba going to be going against Clinks here. A familiar, uh, or a matchup that maybe Clinks is not going to be so familiar with. I mean, Simba, who had been practicing this hero already, but I don't know if MYI are very used to actually going against the hero that often. We'll have to see. Mm -hmm. At least for the start, it's going to be just both sides getting CS, because the Searing Arrows does allow you to get more offensive damage than defensive. But still, we see four denies coming out from Simba, so not too shabby. And he is going to get the Soul Ring out very early. I assume he's going to follow that up with Dust of Appearance if he wants to try to get a solo kill. But it's actually Grazine to bring the detection first. It's detection purchased by the Visage, and he drops it down in his own lane down bottom to try to give him leverage in this 1v1. We'll see how much he could put that to, uh, to use going against this Brood and being able to harass him out from the lane. But as you see, he can kind of just hop into those trees and out from vision, but still be able to be in range to get some good XP. So just the more CS Brood gets out of this is just makes it even the better. Eight and four CS on your off laner solo. That ain't too bad at this point, but glimpse back top lane. They're making another go on Visage and they're gonna punish him once more. Ooh, Puppy will go down in exchange. The soul assumption will bring him down low enough so that the faceless hits. void can clean it on up. It's gonna be a one for one trade between both supports. MYI just managed to finally get themselves onto the board, which is what's most important to them. Yeah. Now, I don't know if I even need to say this, but I'm not a fan of aggressive trialings with Faces Void. Like, I understand they're they're going to get run over by the Brood if they try to try lane down bottom. Like, they're not actually going to be able to zone out the Brood and actually will be feeding supports away. So, I don't think it's a bad call in general. But I do know that the Faces Void is going to have limited contribution here in an offensive capacity. It gets one kill, 
for himself, but uh, many other core heroes in that situation would be able to return some more damage and actually get some more uh, uh, vengeance. Either way, on the mid lane, S4 will drop relatively low, but he's got Tangos, he's got Bottle, and I really think that Lycan's going to have a rough time here, too. It's all three yeah. lanes going up Team Secret, yeah. and you can see it on the CS chart. This is great. I mean, Secret just seemed to be one step ahead. They anticipate the Lycan mid, so with the Tidehunter, who was their first pick, they just kind of flip it over. They're not going to go with the usual offlane Tidehunter. They bring it to mid, where he is clearly dominating. Top lane, though, that's where all the action's been, and it doesn't stop. They're making it go on Big Daddy right now. They got Kinetic Field's going to move him out a bit, but... Big Daddy still goes down. Rubik is going to be traded for it. Uh, now, jumping on forward. They're feeling it right now. Kuroki, long soul assumption does connect. They take down the Ember. They're going to do a little bit of harassment here on Puppy, who should be able to slip on out. But for the first time so far, MYI are going to be able to come out on top with two quick grabs. But here it comes. No tail. See if he can get close enough. Puts out the Thunder Strike, but it's only level one glimpse. Telekinesis again, and... Yeah, they don't really have enough at this point. They're still dancing with the idea here. Faceless Void oh, looking to get dead. on in. Oh, first one bash doing? right there. Oh, Cold Feet, however, it does freeze him. No, it does not. Time Leap's going to be there, and he still takes down Puppy <laughs> back on the other side. Visage, will he go down again? He certainly will. These supports can't stop dying at this point. We're already about nine kills and four minutes in, and I'd have to say that they've all happened here at the top lane. Yeah, now it's worth noting that there was a little bit of an RNG loss for Secret there. About a minute ago, there was a Searing Chains, and there was a two supports and a Centaur in range. And of course, it hits the neutral creep, and the Visage gets to stay in the fight a lot longer. The Searing Chains actually would have forced him back, but instead, he gets another Soul Assumption off, kills off Kuro, and they start snowballing it from there. Another thing is that Puppy mispositions just out in the, the wide open there up against a poor man's shield, Orb of Venom, Faceless Void. Milan gets to just keep him locked in place with bashes and with Orb of Venom slows. And now he's got phase boots up, which in of itself is pretty interesting. But uh -oh. when you're looking to pursue, when you're looking to chase, and when this is the target you want to go on. Man, they are punishing Puppy. They anticipate him making his return to lane, and they cut him off and just take him down again. Unmerciful play uh, from MYI. But can they make it out scot-free? Big question. Kinetic Field going to be dropped. They're trying to go right on to the secondary support, and they get that as well. Radiant Two supports now down on the side of Secret, Ravage. and they are just playing ring around the rosy, but look who's here. S4 jumps in. Big Ravage does connect. They get the kill on Rubik, and they're going to get the other support. S4 with a very nice rotation from that mid lane. Kuro dancing in circles, baited them in just long enough. Look how low he got. Now he'll salve up ahead right back to the top lane. Good turnaround right there from Secret. Yeah, clutch rotation coming in from S4 there, bringing in the Ravage right when they need it. I mean, Kuro walked away with like 20 HP by the end of it. Now we see down bottom Simba just chewing through this tower. This is uh, ridiculous. Green is looking to deny this. He's not actually going to drop it down below 10% here. Simba will build up his uh, forces once more, get another wave to push on, and then last hit the tower when he knows the Clinks can't hold it. Now it's worth noting that the, the spider lights do... Chaos damage, so they only do like they nerfed it. It was it used to be forty percent. I think now it's thirty percent damage to towers. So he's got to last hit it with Radiant's his own hero. But it's actually going to be the melee and range creeps from the dire side to take it down. And Clinks is going to make his move elsewhere to the mid lane. He goes to mid, and they hand over bottom lane. That is scary. Your brood is now forty and seven CS, overtaking everyone. Just behind S four is Tide Hunter. It's not very often you're going to see a Brood and a Tidehunter at the top of your CS charts and your net worth charts at that in a game at any given point, but they're really making it work right here, and Simba is going to get huge. And th I, I can't help but feel like, is this going to be something where he just kind of plants himself in the bottom lane, or will he ever adventure out anywhere else? Or is his job not done until he's in the base? I think he, his job is to force TPs to the tier 3 down bottom, and then he can start making his move. With the new webs and the way the charge system works, he can actually re leave a lane now compared to the old who can't. Oh, it's going to be a Chronos here onto Kuro only, and he's going to get glimpsed back. This wastes the Chrono almost entirely. Wow, great spread right there from both uh, Kuro and Big Daddy to go exactly top and bottom. And though they barely catch Kuro, that, like you said, man, that glimpse and uh, just makes that Chrono to nothing. So when MYI were hoping to make a big kill happen there on the top lane to punish Secret for only rolling with three, and as they commit Brood on bottom, they can't get the punishment. So they'll just have to continue farming it on up for now, and their bottom lane continues to just be a war zone that Brood is just making a home for. Now pushed against the Tier 2 tower. Simba, what does he look to build up from here? It looks like he... Did he invest any money? He's got Treads in the Soul Ring. Oh, he's going right for Clinks here. Yeah, no dust, so he's not going to get the kill, but... 
Yeah, that's actually pretty interesting. The ulti is actually usually really important, but because he maxed out his spin web, he had all the HP he would ever need. In fact, maybe a, a surplus of HP. A nice body block coming out from the spider. It's will it get the cold feet? Yes, Cole is going down. Oh, wow. Oh, the spiderlings, the swarm. It just surrounds you and there's nothing you can do. Now in mid lane, they actually might be able to turn on them. Glimpse all the way back, catches Rubik, and they just follow through. There's going to be the gush right there, and a big Ravage that catches not one but two, and not one but two supports will be put into the grave. Team Secret off to a nice start in this matchup where they already are the heavy favorites. 11 to 6, winning all of the lanes. Just as more pressure begins to build up elsewhere, and they want to finally start addressing the spider, Kuro will just keep on farming in the top lane on this Ember. Mid lane, though, Telekinesis pulled back here by S4. They don't have the Ravage anymore, so technically this would be MYI's best chance to make a fight happen, but they really can't find where to take a good fight. Plus, they need their own time to farm. Lycan is got his mask right now, but he still needs to throw together his Vlads. I don't see really an opportunity where MYI would be able to do a Roche pretty easily unless they somehow take a fight, but this Brood will always in be in the bottom part of the map and could attack. easily contest a Roche, I'd imagine, with these webs. Yeah, every 40 seconds she gets a new web to work with, so she's putting it all over the jungle. You see there's none that were... The ones that were used to be by her Tier 1 tower in the bottom lane have been just collapsed. You can click on those and actually just tell them to destruct, so you can choose which ones go, which ones stay, and mm -hmm. he's cr got this kind of creep spread going to this bottom lane. So he controls the jungle, he controls the lane, and as we mentioned with his uh, skill build, that he has so many webs to work with, he has unlimited HP. The only thing he's lacking is that passive. The incapacity and bite is actually really powerful, but he'll get there soon enough. I mean, he's about to hit level 10, that'll be one point in it, and uh, once that gets maxed out, I don't think anything could stop him. Oh, they want to make a go here. Kinetic Field Static Storm is going to be used and a glimpse back, but he just time walks over that and he wants to make a go on Big Daddy. He still has the Chrono if he wants to use it here and he will, just to secure the support kill. But S4 jumps across, no Ravage, but they will be able to get a trade of supports. But, uh-oh, walking through the tower, eating some pretty big damage. Faceless Void here. Can he get away from this one? Time walk into the woods. Can he TP away from this one? Oh, nope. Secret, no, immediately where he goes. And they just follow him on in there and take him down. No mercy. And Clink's bottom lane so wounded from just trying to battle through these spiders and bottom lane. He's going to be forced to have to make his walk all the way back to base where Simba just has made his home, and he's just laughing. My lane now, not yours. And I mean, what can you really do? You've got Spade Bolt to cure this disease that is spreading over the bottom lane. Like, that's all you've got. And he will pick up like three spiders off of that Fade Bolt, but it gets weaker with every bounce. Oh, and now like, Rubik's like dead. They yeah, he's like, yeah, come to my web. To come into my web, my pretty. <laughs> oh, not... nope. Can't get it that time. Radiant's the dust is going to connect. Is under attack. Okay, so fast, yeah, no. That's just. I don't think they could do anything. The, the bottom lane is now plagued. And they're going to need to commit a lot for it. Now they do move forward. They get the one-hit brash. And wow, they're connecting a lot of right-click from the high ground from Clinks. Space created, though, for Simba as he just keeps them held down here. At least three members. Allows top lane to be free and easy farm for Secret. You can see right over here, S4 is on the way. He's got a Ravage at the ready. And they still can't even take Simba down. Just hides himself into the trees and slowly heals himself back up. Yeah. I think Rubik actually would have died there if there was one or two points in incapacitating bite, but nevertheless, he just forces them back off the lane. That's all he has to do is just continue to force. If he pops his ultimate here, he can man up against Clink's uh, soul ring or not. And actually, it's going to be, yeah, the tide coming in to help out. Oh, this could be dead. a kill. Well, they don't have Dyer's the detection, so he is going to be able to just attack. sneak out of there. But if Radiant's they had caught him with the Ravage or under the yeah. sensor board, then that would have been a kill. I was expecting him to just pull out the Ravage just to get the kill. I mean, it's Clink's, you know, he's like one of their better late game potentials why not right i think it would have been well worth it but they're not going to go for it they were maybe hoping he would just get reckless and not even go in viz but that's not going to be the case so now myi just kind of running around the map looking for what their potential groove could be for this game as they continue to get pressured about net worth still held at the top from s4 with simba's brood just behind Kuroki, a slower Disruptor, start though. from what we usually seen for his farm but he's he's creeping his way back up in there with how much time he's had top lane but Top lane seems to be the next target for MYI. Klinks is in stealth mode, seeing if he can maybe scout anything out. Yeah, they have to save the Chronosphere for the retaliation. They have to Chrono the Tide when he goes in for a counterplay. Right now, doesn't have a TP scroll, but he still has that Blink Dagger and a Haste Rune. He can move to the top lane in about 10 seconds flat, and he's actually going to be making his way up there attack. as we speak. There we go. Ice Blast is also going to kind of set the stage. It does connect there on like an immediate rotation glimpse. Can I get it? Can they get the vision? That's what Curl's looking to get for right here is 
Big Daddy doesn't actually step out from the trees to really go for it nonetheless, but they do get their mega kill as they take down S4. Clinks inherits that bit of extra bounty and now moves forward onto Big Daddy, who pops all of his spells but goes down. Will those spells help out in taking down Clinks? No, they will not. Even Kuro with his DD now pressured, moving on in. It is going to be your faceless void. No chrono, but no needed. A few more right clicks, and they actually managed to clean house up here. So taking down three, very significant fight here for MYI as they begin to move on to his tier two. But bottom lane, Rude continue to farming, doing what she likes here, as she's already going to probably secure the two two herself. I don't think it's too terrible of a trade from Secret, though they do lose their Ember Spirit. Mid lane, Booktop is going to take some hits here. It should be an easy duo kill. Like they can go and clip some right back into it, and they've got a lot of damage between these two heroes. So Booktop. Throw, doesn't even throw out the soul stone in almost AFK, but I know the case he was dead. Um, yeah, I still think that it was a really nice move for MYI to get the Chronosphere onto the tide, and uh, again, that's the only hero you really can afford to Chrono now because if you Chrono like the Amber Spirit or something, the tide's going to come in and ravage you and uh, nullify that and then turn the fight around. But they get the top tier one at the cost of their bottom tier two, and Simba's going to force them to TP to the tier three now. He's got his Necro up. He didn't go Orchid or any fighting Radiant's build. He just wants to keep playing the, the split push, and it's going to be very frustrating for a team that has, again, absolutely no AoE. They have to Chronosphere to kill the Brood, too. I mean, yeah. it's just painful, but uh, she's going to be forcing at least a couple TPs back. Hasn't really started chipping away at the Tier 3 just Radiant's yet, but it creates space for them to bring denied. down the Tier 1 in the yeah, Brew's one of those heroes Radiant's that you reserve for your fifth attack. pick in situations like this when you know she can really run amok and not really be punished whatsoever. Picking up early on just really sets an opportunity for teams to easily be able to counter. Legion Commander is like one of the first ones that comes to my mind that could really do well work here, but they go right past the tower and they do commit a couple of ultimates here to be able to finish off Visage, but they do get a jump. Big Daddy, though, is going to be paying with his own life for it as Lycan cleans him up. Now the Ravage is going to be coming out. Does oh no! catch nicely on it's three. Uh-oh, it's going to be taken away here from Rubik, and they use it on the go-back. Going on Kuroki. Chrono also going to be pulled out for this one as Kuro goes down. They lose three again for the one Visage. Very nice grab right there from Rubik to take that uh, Ravage back, and, well, the Chrono certainly helps being able to secure the kill on Ember. Mm -hmm. Very worth it for the kills they did acquire, but now they have to be worried about their bottom lane. Brood is extremely confident that she's going to be able to go in and just maul down this tower. It's it's 50% damage from these fighter wings against fortified structures. That's uh, It went uh, from 50% to 40%, so... Uh, Broodmother, since that nerf, has was like out of the meta for a very long time, but she's back in now and she's still doing quite a bit whenever they leave that tower alone. So without big ultimates like Ravage and Chronosphere, they have to rotate down and to play very, very defensively. They do take down the tier 1 just barely with Lycan's Wolves, but otherwise they're just really not able to leave their base and take objectives across the map like you would want to do with a Visage like in lineup. Radiant's yeah, they're working pretty hard just to even attack. get these tier ones. Uh, fortunately for MYI, well not fortunately here for Visage, and he's blimped all the way back. Your Visage already three and nine, now three and 10 after that whip pickoff right there is really struggling to be able to put together the farm himself. I'm not imagining a future of an Agnum Scepter anytime soon here if you're uh, the blue player, but unfortunately, uh, we'll see Secret where Simba has been residing in this bottom lane is finally gonna get some attention, at least from the Lycan throw. Lycan, by the way, did find a kill there in the mid lane, taking down Puppy's AA, but Simba now scouting out. Side-by-side -side farming with Clinks, it looks like. Now they turn their sights over. Simba eating huge damage, but baits him in long enough for Big Daddy to come on through. That's huge damage with the ultimate, and now Simba steps back, gets some right clicks in. No! Yes! There it is. The last Thunderstrike could be able to get it right there, but now they have the dust on their turn. Scouting out Simba, but Rubik, you're just one man! Yeah. You get blown the hell up. That was not a fight that you could take, sir, not without assistance from your Lycan, but who's going to be glipsed back in into the kinetic field? TP's out immediately, and that's a smart choice as Kuroko flies through. Attack. Kuroko, Kuroki flies through. He didn't have the mana anyways for the chains, but still. I, I think he popped it, like, in the middle of his animation, but he just wasn't close enough, and uh, the Lycan uh, does slip through, but you don't man fight a brood when he's got his ulti up. This insatiable hunger just makes it impossible for them to bring him down. He can bait all day long, and at the end of the day, when you try to duel him, he's going to come out ahead. Milan now looking for the Chronosphere play up against this where he popped the Mask of Madness, but only to get ravaged, anchor smashed, and right click down. Oh Will not get away. No he's Chrono saved. for you, and S4 blinks out of the bird stuns. Wow, wow, wow. Secret have been doing that a lot this game, baiting in MYI into a situation where they think they have the advantage and then help is right there. And it happens again here. Jump forward, Gush. They're going to go for Lycan. They know Shapeshift is down and he was hit with that Ice Blast, but 
Not enough damage to really bring him into danger shatter zone, but still pressure nonetheless here on the top lane to keep Lycan busy because, well, bottom. That's where Broodmother continues to build on up. Now with Necro 3 complete on Brood, there is at no point that you can leave this bottom lane unattended because she's going to get what she wants, but it looks like the next thing Team Seer want all together is a Roche. Meanwhile, mid lane, engagement onto S4 here. Soul Sumption flies out, eating big damage from Clinks. S4 could be in trouble. Close call. The Wolf canceling the Blink Dagger. No, he doesn't get the right click oh. off. This is Paws coming through. A ping issue for the Rubik here. And uh, in the meantime, of course, Roche is going to go down quickly. Now, I find it really f uh, cool to watch these spiderlings when they run through the web. It didn't used to be like this, but when they run through the web now, they actually get the benefit of it. The fa the invisible effect, the phased movement speed, mm -hmm. and uh, then, of course, the uh, increased movement speed. So they get to clump up all together, and there's this, this like tiny clump of dozens of spiders. And as yep. soon as they leave the web, they just like spread out very, yep. very abruptly. So it's just very interesting to see how it looks when they move around and just skitter about the map. Yeah, and also <laughs> the, the health regen as well, I'd imagine here. And yeah, <laughs> Broodmother, something uh, you don't get to see very often, but we do welcome it here with open arms. And of all the people to pick it on up, I was curious which team was going to look to throw in their loop. And it was right in front of my eyes here. Simba on his off lane position. Once you're given the opportunity to grab it, and there's not a lot of counter out there. Brood has been pretty much showing what she could do best and what has plagued many of us pub players when that one person who just loves to play Brood comes into your game and even though you feel strong about taking team fights and you're winning, you realize that you're only winning because it's a 5 versus 4 and you, you lost your racks on the other side of the world. And Simba looking to do a little bit more of the same with Necro 3 complete. Makes it easier for them to kind of move on and get Roche, but then thereafter, if he ever gets the opportunity to move it into the high ground of the MYI base, he can get what he wants very quickly. Yeah. Now, to the benefit of those that aren't uh, really familiar with how to deal with the Broodmother in pub play or whatever, uh, a couple of old counters that we got to see back for 2012 when the hero was extremely popular. We got to see 1v1 matchups featuring Tidehunter because he has the Anchor Smash, Sand King because he has the Caustic as well as Sandstorm. The Darkseer was really good with Ion Shell. And uh, more recently, we've seen Legion Commander added, and she's really good with the overwhelming odds. There's yes. a couple others out there. You have to take the Acid Spray from Alchemist, which can be frustrating and stuff like that. Um, but what you run the risk of when you draft all this AoE against her, assuming she didn't just get fifth picked when you didn't have the choice to counterplay. Um, mm. Oh, S4 playing with fire there as uh, up gets a void. But if, yeah, if, he's, if you actually get the chance to draft against her instead of her getting fifth picked, what you run the risk of by drafting all too much AoE is that she actually just goes for one of these newer builds, which is just no spider links at all. Actually, oh. Simba gonna take some hits here. They have the sentry. They will be able to bring him down for the first time this game. A very nice kill. Yeah, they commit a lot for it this time. They're they're well prepared with the birds, with the sentries, and there's nowhere your pesky brood can go. Once spotted out, doesn't really have the ease of access to just kind of make an easy retreat. Pincered right there into the trees. They do finally take down that brood, but. Hey, your brood is about to reach the 10k network mark. And they push up here in the top lane. Meanwhile, mid lane, you can see a quick grab right there. Uh-oh, follow through. Ravage coming through. S4 thinking maybe he can man up here on your faceless Void. Is going to try his best to run him down, but Void with a time walk at the ready. Oh, glimpses back and away from Daddy. Does he see him? Oh, no, he so doesn't. Close. He you can't quite inside. see him. You have to be inside oh. the circle. The Thunderdome there, but no, oh. he's able to jump away. Um, unfortunately, S4 stacks the Ravage on the Colty. He wasn't sure if it was actually going to proc if he was within the range when he was running out, so he just wanted to guarantee it with the Ravage. Yeah, they got that long duration stun, but they didn't have enough damage with him alone, so nice sneak away, and yeah, unfortunate on the attempted glimpse there. So, yeah, Puppy has died so much this game. Six deaths on him. A lot of them have just been like solo chronos or solo jumps with Void, and there's really nothing he can do. Uh-oh, Kuro gonna get a little bit of his own medicine. Something Kuro loves to do on his clinks, but uh, even though the Orchid's there, it's gonna secure the first Aegis life. Your Ember Spirit marked for one death. Clinks knows it's gonna happen, doesn't even pursue. Knowing that just how the trend has been going from Secret is you get one great grab right there, it's not gonna be too much uh, further away that you're gonna see a couple more Secret members looking to come and get their own. So I like the idea of him not getting too greedy about hunting down where Kuro went, and sure enough, there was help right there from both Puppy and Big Daddy. But now they're out for blood. They pull out their smoke and they inch on forward here. Clinks is here in the top lane. Obviously they don't see him, but they do have dust in case he does show himself and they want to make the move back. Yeah. 
I think uh, that Simba's actually going to be going for a Heaven's Halberd here. Now, obviously, the Broodmother is an agility oh, hero, but... Lays huge fight, break out top lane, another Chrono to take down big old puppy. And now they're moving on to No-Tail here. Huge soul assumption, he pops his dust and glimpses back Clinks. Barely lives, one more auto attack, they do get it, glimpse back. Clinks sees S4 and will try to hunt him down. Oh, Faceless Void is here. Well, Time Weave's way out there in a way. And, uh, well, with no chrono, he can't really lock oh, S4 down. What's the TP down. status? Can they actually defend their bottom Dyer's lane? But TP is, is up on Void, but he's pushing up top. Dyer's and, uh, yeah, this Brood is actually going to get some good damage here onto the tier 3 tower. Fortification is going to be forced. S4 doesn't have a Ravage to prevent them from making a getaway, unfortunately, but they are pretty much focused on trying to take this tier 2 quickly. Bottom Dyer's lane, here we go. Mother moves fallen. on in to Dyer's the high ground and begins to unleash a Fury top. with only a Rubik to defend. He is certainly going to need a bit more assistance. Your Tier 3 now brought down to about half-life. Your top Tier 2 will actually still live. For now, they're just kind of holding it about, but they need to make a decision quickly as far as what they want to do for MYI. Because bottom lane bottom either needs assistance or they need to make a big play Dyer's happen here top on top. Tower has been denied. Yep, so it's going to be dropping extremely low. I'm not sure if Symbol will actually be able to finish off this Tier 3, though. They have the Fortification. They can TP back with the Void, but with the Chrono already down, yeah, he's not going to be doing too much. Simba will just walk away from this but they do get the top tier too uh the tide did not have enough mana to really contest it and uh they make a jump onto simbo mask of madness is going to be pop time walk forward simba trying to retreat moving up and far away can he get out of the vision path oh one more right click going to be right there milan does get it done and uh just a nice grab once more on your brood simba's work before he got taken out was taking down that tower very very low one more move like that and he's going to have the raxes exposed and the damage start coming in puppy Able to get himself out of a potential bind right there with the Force Staff. It's Clinks. It only took like two shots to bring him down to like a third life. And that's why sometimes you see actually Mantis style picked up on Broodmother. You can uh, obviously take the dust off when you use the activation to dispel yourself. But uh, there's so many issues with the Chronosphere, Gems, Sentries that that isn't always the best solution. He's just going to be building up this Talisman of Evasion. I think that is going to be a Heaven's Halberd really good against uh, the Clinks in particular. Uh, and uh, you look at it, Broodmother, yes, she's an agility hero, but she's a hero that naturally has a ton of damage. You get 100 bonus damage from Insatiable. All you need to do is live long enough for your life shield to really kick in. So I actually like to have their option if she can get it. And, uh, and of course, this is only his second death. So he's had a pretty good farm game so far. Seeker rotate to the bottom to see if they can get a hold of anyone, but they had already TP'd on out. They head back. And they will be able to see a DD rune down here. Big grab for them. They want to put it to strong use. So Void, with an Agnums now, very much favoring the Chronosphere and being able to put it to use as he's put many a use on the puppy's head, being able to find those kills. They continue to farm up the secret jungle. And Simba, who had been taken down previously in the bottom lane, makes her return back to the bottom lane. Talk about bring, building up a halberd. I, I would not mind seeing that grab right now especially against that clink, so we'll see here. Smoked up, though, they move in, and they're going to make a go here on Faceless Void. You cannot farm our jungle! Not without paying for it. So they take yes. down Void, and they move on in. Nice glimpse grabbed right there. They want a second one with Visage, but just as that happens, well, they're going to get it. They move on forward. Visage does go down. Bottom lane Simba. is going to be going down to the spiders alone. They got the yep. sentry wards, but he just can't keep himself up. And the dust is going to dispel onto Simba. The orchid will come out, but just too late. He invises once more, walking right back under that sentry ward. Attack. Wow, secret getting it done. Top in their own jungle, taking down a couple. And Simba withstands and gets a kill himself here on the bottom lane. Just more or less secret still getting the most out of what they want. Clinks, though, he has his orchid Ooh, together. Necro sees Clinks. Ah, he's not going to be able to get him, though. Necrobook out now. He needs to be very, very careful. Yeah, he's crossing over here. He's going to walk right into the Necro Vision, but Simba is not going to commit for anything oh. quite yet. Oh, he's eating oh, so wow. much damage, though. Yeah, he actually got the death will of the Necronomicon when he killed the melee one. Is this actually going to bring him down? Yes, he's going to go down to that spider. Oh! Level. He From eats the melee Necro Creep, which does heal him because of Death Pack, but it also damages him with the pure damage nuke even more so, so that he does take a huge chunk of damage. Then the Ice Blast, of course, comboed with the big damage nuke, and Sayonara, Mr. Bone Fletcher. Good work right there. Just a little careless right there from Clinks. We're getting that bit of global oomph coming out from Secret's side. Karak's going to briefly cross paths with Void, just chains him down, and 
Goes back to his merry way of building up farm. Touching base with Kuro on his Ember. He has that battle for complete. About 300 gold here. As he continues to farm up through his own jungle. He'll constantly have Puppy by his aid. No Tails here as well. Because they don't have to worry too much about the bottom half of the map. Where Simba's been not only claiming the bottom lane. But also taking a lot away from MYI's jungle. Lycan begins to push out this bottom lane just oh, there it is. a little Time bit, but is money. here we go. Refresher orb already thrown together from S4. Seven minutes on this mid tides refresher, and he's got everything to support it. This is insane. Ice blast comes through. Doesn't really quite connect on anyone, but it's clear secret are looking to move on into the jungle. You're going to briefly see with the Necro Book. Faceless Void on the way out. Oh, Big Daddy wanted to get that one with the glimpse. They won't see the vision here, and he does make it out. Very dangerous play coming out from your Faceless Void, but he is able to make an escape, and Lycan pops his shapeshift just to kind of retreat back to the base area, it looks like. It's unfortunate. He's going to need... Oh, well, actually, he does get a little bit of move speed on his creeps to try to pound down his Tier 1 tower, but he's not going to finish it off, not because of backdoor protection that doesn't exist for Tier 1 towers, but just because the creeps aren't really that strong at the moment. His howl wasn't active on them either, but I think at this point, Cole just has to, like, run down mid. Like, he has to try... Because they know they can't fight 5v5, against the double ravage. They just have to start ratting as hard as possible. They just push down top, push down mid, get away from that five-man play. But it's gonna be Milan on to Simba here. Can he even bring him down? Mm, I don't think so. Not with that ravage coming out. Now Milan's gonna be the one taken down and it's a killing spree for Simba. Felt like he was just taken down not too long ago. And now they look to wait it about. They wanna try to farm up the birds. They do get one, they get two. A hundred more gold right there to the pocket of Big Daddy on his disruptor. Steam Secret coming out with a big two-for-one trade after Puppy got picked off in the mid lane. It's Clinks going on pickoff duty as he could get another here. The Orchid is under attack. No. will secure it. He TPs out right next to the dead corpse of that Disruptor. Two big grabs right there for your Clinks. So we'll see here as Secret continue to pressure attack. about this bottom lane. Simba with a full army of creeps. And his old nemesis, the Rubik, still on defensive duty with that Fade Bolt. I actually have to call into question the Aghanim Scepter pickup of the Faceless Void here. Like, I, I understand the Chrono is extremely valuable to picking off the Ember Spirit, but at the end of the day, they don't have that much damage to put in the Chrono. The Void only has a Mask of Madness. The only other ranged DPS is going to be the Clinks, and he's not always going to be there doing his own thing very frequently. Oh, big, wow. easy you kill on Rubik as all the spells hit him at essentially at the same time. But yeah, oh, if this easy. Void had like a Maelstrom or a Battle here, he'd be able to deal with the spiders a lot better, and he would actually have damage in the spheres. So, especially when he's level 16, and that difference between Ags and not Ags is only 30 seconds instead of like 50, Radiant's I think it'll be very unfortunate the Void just doesn't have the deeps. Almost a pickoff right there for Clinks. He got a lot of shots in, prolonging the use of the Orchid there at the end, which was great, but still just a little too fast. Kuro was able to walk away from that Clinks and make it out alive. Your Ice Blast, though, comes in bottom lane. Not going to quite connect on either. Very well spread Radiant here, but look at this. Fortified. I mean, it's Simba just doing what he wants. He takes Radiant's the one Rex down pretty dang low. He has the safety net of S4 and company just behind, so he can kind of move in there and do as he pleases. But here we go. His secret looking to take the high ground with Rax is already exposed, and that melee Rax about dead. This is their time to take the fight. They move in. Kuro oh. only going to catch on Big Daddy. And that's not going to be enough. They do take him down with Clinks' right click. And now they focus fire Simba. Telkinesis up and above them, pulled on back and away here. We're still waiting. S4 silenced up, nursing that Ravage for now, as it's not really necessary. They take down that first set of racks, but look what's happening on the other side here, Blaze. Up and above, Lycan doing a little bit of his own Lycan thing. Going for two sets of racks himself. He's got one, and he's going for the second. Meanwhile, on the bottom, Kuro gets a kill, cleaning up and taking down that Rubik, and they fall through with a secondary grab right there, finishing out the Visage. So it is possibly going to look like two racks for two racks, as Lycan did finish his job there at the top lane. Secret, they do take more casualties. Yeah, Radiant's but I think they're going to be able to rebound a little bit faster here. Symbol will get healed up, and they can just rush for the Tier 2 in mid. They've mm -hmm. got one Ravage, and in 40 seconds, they'll have another. So I think they're going to be able to be ready for the next fight a little bit sooner. But nevertheless, it was a really smart play from the Lycan taking the top lane. Now, as I was mentioning, their only way they win this one out is through rat play or some crazy pickoff on S4. Let's see if they can do it. They still have one Ravage ready. 20 more seconds. They could have two. Imagine they'll wait for that point, also pinging out the fact that Roche is up, so I guess making it all the easier if they can grab that extra life, and then with two sets of Ravages, can, or just two Ravages, they'll be able to move on into the MYI base, and 
finish what they started, already taking out that bottom lane. They now secure a very, very hard team fight to kind of counter against. And MYI, a team that's kind of only digging deep for maybe some rat and split push play. I have seen it done before, Blaze. I'd have to tell you, Power Rangers on the back of Ditya Ra certainly Dyer's put together an attempt to his attack. own. But this is going against Team Secret here. And Klink's trying to do some side farm. He's going to get quickly punished with a Ravage and even a Static Storm just to make sure he gets nothing that he wants. He is down oh, now for a full minute. On yep, jump in. They get the Chrono out. Ice Blast perfectly set on top here to take on nothing. the Void. And they can't do anything. They can't see him. And he just goes under the cover of his own web. And... That was all for nothing. Time now jumping on Ford S4 with a DD rune. Visage. No chance whatsoever for that and will be killed. And now only three to stand. Uh oh, oh Rubik. Nice glimpse grab from Big Daddy. They get another one. One after the other. Secret. Yes. Mow down MYI. And it's looking like another split push effort coming from your Lycan. But this is going to be an easy mid lane push if Secret want it. Yeah. I mean, the Chronosphere as a cooldown, in theory, is what you need to kill off a lot of these heroes here. And having it on 60 second cooldown sounds good, but if you can't actually kill anybody in the Chrono, it just doesn't matter. You're always going to have to worry about that Ravage on the fringe edges of it, and you just have 140 damage right-clicking Void going up against a Butterfly Broodmother. You're not killing him. You just aren't, and, uh... Radiance yeah, no. Is under attack. Feeling the Big weak. Daddy gets the glimpse. They catch out Void, and they use their second Ravage for it. Now he gets the hit with the Ice Blast, but he goes right back with a chrono he wants to get someone he does get down big daddy but can he make it away he does leap over and around but nope he ends up getting shattered just brought down too low with the ice blast already on him nothing you can do about it clinks though back from the dead moves on in sees puppy gets a few shots in and uh well he needs to finish it off does blink over and oh, oh we'll get it right there puppy kind of making him work for it right there on the back end of that ghost scepter and now they're gonna make a go on clinks karo leading out the front remnant forward and he's gonna oh gets caught nice change and slide of fist from karo secures the kill there on clinks still with buyback available however on your clinks i guess it is preventing them from pushing on into the base so. Nice attempt from Cole with the top lane being pushed in, backdoor protection was broken, so he sent his entire army to the mid lane, took the tier 3, took uh, half the range rack's life, but in the end he does get finished off, though Nutale will have to kite away from these super creeps, he's going to survive, and yeah, as you mentioned, uh, they, they will have buybacks, so they won't be able to push the base, but they won't be able to take direct fights, and there's going to be Secret moving right into the Roche pit with all three lanes pushed down so that the Lightning can't go out to play again. Here they go. Bring it down pretty dang quick. Flexing that butterfly, putting it to strong use with a plate mail and 2k gold. Probably looking to throw together a nice little AC for himself and for the team. And well, we'll see here. Is it still Secret's game? But MYI with their cheeky tactics, trying to bring it back with some side push <coughs> tactics here. Actually, have added more pressure onto the base itself than Secret have done, but Secret have shown that they can get the fight when they want it with big, big ultimates. And now Roche going down. It is going to be Simba who picks up that Aegis and Waltz's mother right back towards the enemy side. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like the Lycan is going to be going for an AC2 to counteract the AC that will be coming from the Broodmother. Very powerful for him pushing, for him fighting, but if he goes for it right now, he cannot afford to buy out. Like, he has buyback available now but if he tries to complete it he likely will not have it and that's one kinetic field pickoff from killing him off he does have the bkb and there is no agonins up on no tail but they still have so many tools for locking him down and yeah he has to be very very careful about every movement from this point forward in the game he needs to keep that gold for ac but he also can't be picked off Trying to go for a backdoor play here as uh, the Wolfman creeps on forward, going to get put too. into a connect field. Oh, nice quick juke there from Big Daddy, and the chrono's not going to happen. Now a Ravage followed through. Static Storm's not going to be offering a whole lot, but it's enough. They take down Visage. Sidestepping it away is going to be your Faceless Void. They're heading right back towards the base where they feel like pressure could be coming from Simba. Simba now on the way out, steps away briefly, now makes a go. Faceless Void with no more Chrono to work with. Very, very slow and jump in Ravage number two. Faceless Void will be brought down right there. A few more right clicks coming through as Simba really flexing out this Broodmother. There's your glimpse back. Rubik, not gonna be in the safety of his own home, will be taken down. Three down all day now for the side of MYI. Trying to pull out a backdoor play in that mid lane, but Secret were onto him. And now, Secret with this big team fight advantage, move right into the base and go knocking tier three 
Buyback from Rubik, but this is probably the last hurrah for MYI as Secret just kind of continue to get what they want. Exactly. Uh, Simba forced the Lycan to TP back, and as soon as that happened, the chance for them to take the enemy base was gone. Uh, just too much power from the Brood, pressuring the bottom lane, keeping Clinks uh, farming instead of fighting, because he really loves to be ganking around that 15 to 20 minute mark. And uh, then when it came down to it, they kept on having to respond to him down bottom, now in mid, and they just can't make the plays that they want to. On the back of S4's incredible tide under play, Simba has been able to do wonders, and across the board, Team Secret have absolutely just run over MYI. Now Void's coming back up. He does have the Chronosphere, and uh, one Rex is still standing in bed, but not for too long. Not for too long at all, as uh, it is going to be taken apart right there. So two racks now down on the side of MYI. Very well oh, wounded. Secret go back. Like it on the hunt. Oh, puppy. Four staff to the low ground to step away from that one. Big Daddy's also here if he needs to glimpse someone back, but Radiance he might put out an offensive glyph, making it a go on mid lane here if they want to. Stepping forward, Static Storm. Chains will hold him oh. there. Kinetic Field, Cold Feet, the works. Just as Faceless Void comes back to fight, he goes back down again. They do manage to take down Big Daddy, but they also lose their clinks. Simba continues to wrap everyone up in his little web and just suck the blood right out from the team. Cole's going in for the backdoor play. They're going to TP back, see it coming, but how well do they defend it? Koro going 1v1 against him, killing off the wolves, and popping the fortified very early as their two fours are also under assault. Simba's going to be in the mid, but he has nothing to kill here. It's all about this uh, Lycan, and he is going to be going down. Didn't even pop the BKB, just ensnared, no shapeshift, no nothing. He falls, and with him, I feel their hope of bringing this one back. They're down significantly in terms of racks, and they obviously can't take the fight. He's not looking to give up yet. He obviously didn't use his shapeshift. He has the buyback so that when he buys back, because he'll probably have to here, he has a full minute left before he does return, he can pull out that uh, shapeshift at that point and try to put up one last hurrah as far as defense. But the only uh, person looking to go more offensive right now is Simba and S4 is their dynamic duo. With a one Ravage at least at the ready here, Ice Blast will not quite catch. Had that been caught when they were close enough, I imagine Radiant's a blink forward gush nuke attack. from Simba would have been good enough. But Simba Radiant's alone here, still in the base, fallen. uses that Necro Book to take out all Sentry Wards. He takes out a Tier 4, and he has just been plaguing this home base from MYI. All game long, like you were talking about before, forcing MYI to not spend enough me time on farming up. Clinks ever since he got his Orchid, couldn't really put anything else together because they constantly had to move back to the base. and prevent the Brood from really getting on in there. Mm -hmm. It just proves to work out so nicely in this secret lineup. Yeah, and every point in time where Secret were dictating the pace of the game, Kuro was able to do what he wanted. He's actually accrued 13 kills and 14 assists, and it's because, you know, when you're committing two heroes down bottom constantly, that enables the Ember to go for 3v3 plays and to shine in that environment where he's not being controlled too much. So, yes, uh, theoretically, with like three or four heroes moving against him, they'll kill him off nine out of ten times, but when most of those heroes are committed down bottom, Kuro just gets to do whatever he wants. So not to understate his play, but it's been a pretty easy game for him. Oh, they were trying to see if they could get Clinks on the way back. They got an Ice Blast on him, and he quickly popped out oh. the DKB. Try Remnant, but here we go. Chrono catches him out, and they do get the kill there, taking down Big Daddy very nicely as he tried to move through the Secret Shop trying to glimpse back Clinks, but does end up paying with his own life. Now Team Secret here in the top lane. We'll see what their next move could be. This is the last lane standing for MYI. Lycan pushes down this mid lane. Would love to be able to get himself back into Secret's base. Well, the creeper's going to get there. I don't think anybody's going to cut down this wave, so the ba backdoor protection will be broken down, but what he does with it is the real question here. We have S4. Oh, could be picked off here. They have Cornisphere coming up in 20 seconds, but for now, he is just going to be anchor smashing, four staffing as best he can to survive, and will commit one Ravage, maybe two with the Ice Blast. Here we go, there's one, there's the two! Oh, Visage is gonna crumble just like that, and though they lose S4, they're looking to fight on here. Rubik steps on back and away, but it is gonna be Cole who does get the clean up. AA falls, and mid lane, where Simba is, could be in a bit of trouble here. He's so tanky, he just avoids yeah, that all that damage. That butterfly is just like, no problem, walks away. This, this, this spider. Someone needs to call uh, the Orchid Man, the Pest Control, to be able to help with this one, because uh, proven to really be farmed out of control at this point as a Void. Now with still Chrono ready, not having to expend it in that previous fight, this is 
MYI's best chance at moving into the base and getting what they can done. Yep, it's going to be a quick buyback, plus Shiva's guard coming up for S4. Wants to do some work even without the Ravage available. They are going to go his back call. He doesn't have a PKB. Expended oh it to stop the back call, but the Chronosphere comes through. All right, it does come through. He's still eating so much damage. That Ice Blast, though, not even necessary. Simba's able to finish it off with the right clicks alone, and now... Faceless Void, no Chrono, he already used it. Time Walk, Desperation, TP. Can we get the slide oh. of his chains? We can! Grabbed right there, Milan. Gonna be stuck. Speaking of being stuck, though, S4 as well, just right next to him. Even a Static Storm committed to this one, but there he goes. Godlike streak now for Kuroki's Ember Spirit. 44 to 30. Secret stopped their push down mid lane, but look at this guy. Here's Clinks. They know something's up. They're pinging it out. Puppy's there. Oh, get spotted now. Uh oh, immediate chase. Ice blast. Oh no. Bombs his BKB and TP. He does make it out. Makes it out. No glimpse going to be there, obviously, because of the BKB. And oh, cheeky play, but secret we're ready. Yeah, I don't know why he's still going on the internet version. He knows he has the ghost after. He's used it on him for like three times. So awkward. I thought he'd just get some damage into the racks, but of course, that would have been regen too. As the response team was there. Kuro is able to bounce back and forth across the map very nicely. I was talking about this very early on, but when you're up against the, the Lycan and the Visage, you want something global, you want something that moves across the map, and Ember and Ancient Ember can both contribute globally. Now Booktop getting picked off by Nice Other Blimps, and that should be the top lane to Rax, though they only have one Ravage to fight for it. Puppy showing off those fancy red shoes. The Boots of Travel brings him to mid lane, and the second he comes in, they just pull out the Glimpse Ice Blast, and... Like, nothing you can really do about it. Now going again towards these tier fours. <laughs> these, these stunning Radiant birds trying what they the damn well they can to slow Radiant's them down. And even the glyph coming out. Uh, I don't think there's a whole lot much more they can do, but this is potentially the last fight. Moving forward, charging. BKB, Wolfman, running right towards Kuroki, chasing him all the way out in the base and away while Simba continues to just go right for the throne. And now chased out S4, moves out from the bottom ground, and... Simba returns right back. It's stunned up from those birds not once but twice and puts his sights right onto the throne itself. Yes, there's a fight potentially happening here on the outside, but Dota's a game of taking down the base, and Simba's trying to do that for his team. Gets caught up right now with the Chrono and could go down. Big soul assumption, big damage, but the Ravage coming through just in the nick of time from S4. Saves him about, and he's going to get his own double kill. Void goes down, then does Visage, locking him down into a pit of death with the kinetic field as Big Daddy. And very, very well wounded Lycanthrope. Like a few more right clicks could finish him off right here. Oh, oh, they are able to get it. Simba does end up falling. Now Clinks brings out the right click. The Ice Blast does connect on the last two survivors. However, Secret, move back in. S4, Anchor Smash, Rubik dies. Clinks also going to go down. One last buyback coming out from Rubik just to see his throne go down. It's going to be Team Secret who get another big win here and finish out their day 2-0. and Indeed, that was just a hell of a game from Team Seeker. I really love the style, the strat in general. It really fits the team, meshes with them very well, and they found a lot of great opportunities to put it to use. I'm not so sure with the MYI draft. We talked about how they had to do something different, so uh, I'm not going to question the fact that it wasn't an orthodox draft going Clinks, Lycan, and Void, but I am going to consider the fact that maybe the Chronospheres weren't as uh, impactful as he wanted them to be. They were certainly plentiful with the Agon of Scepter, but certainly uh, had some issues actually doing the damage once that was completed. They didn't have any answers to uh, mischance. The Broodmother provides a very large amount of mischance with the incapacitating bite. She went for a butterfly, so did Kuro, and not a single hero on their team could answer that. They didn't have any MKBs, any hexes, and in the end, the, the core heroes are able to overpower the tricore of MYI. But across the board, Team Secret played immaculately, and S4 Tide is uh, honestly only rivaled by Simba's. Great play. It was it was a pleasure to watch Brood. Uh, I'm not sure if that was the official debut of the patch. That's the first time I've seen a Brood picked up since he, uh, she was brought back into captain's mode. But Simba, man, puts it to strong use, and there was really not a whole lot that MYI could do about it. So fantastic game to watch, fantastic sets of games to watch. Star Ladder Season 11 Europe is done for today, but we do have more Dota coming your way at about 4.30 Pacific time, 7.30 Eastern. We're going to be back with more Star Ladder action as America will happen. Just one quick little best of one between Not Today and Pain Gaming. I'll be back for that action, though. Blaze, it's been a pleasure as always for you joining me remotely out there in the world. 
Uh, everyone out there, please show your love and support for the guy for showing so much dedication with even a kid. Give him his love at Blaze Casting on Twitter. Myself, catch me on mine at Call Guy. Folks, take care. We'll be back with more Dota in a couple of hours.